Hey listeners, before we get started, I wanted to share with you a brand new podcast that you might be interested in. It's the new Braves Dugout Podcast. This podcast is about all things Atlanta Braves baseball. They talk about roster moves, potential trades, game recaps. Now this may all seem cliche for a sports podcast, but they also include a special segment each week where they talk about controversial topics using only stats and logic and no bias. Controversial topics such as which Braves player should or should not be in the Hall of Fame, why your favorite player may not be as valuable as you think they are, or how certain players you may not like deserve more love. It's the new Braves Dugout Podcast. You can currently catch this podcast. See what I did there? Catch this podcast on Spotify or on Anchor.fm. It's sure to be a hit. Not this summer, but the third summer after the summer of 2041 comes a 33rd installment of the intergalactic franchise that is just like at least 25 of the others that came before. There's nothing here, sir. Just a meteoroid belt. Straight ahead, Private. Then flank left. I said flank left! A longer time ago, in a galaxy just further away than the one that's far, far away, is the underdog story of an unlikely hero with a sixth sense for traps. I gave you a direct order to flank left, Private Akbar. It's a trap! General, it isn't a trap! Good job, Private Akbar, or should I say, Captain Akbar. The story of a mutant shrimp and his struggle to rise through the ranks of a rebellion. You better stop hanging out with that hoodlum Calrissian and be more like that Private Anakin. But it's a trap! I think you might be right. Something is a little off with the senator and his golden child. The story of an orphan turned soldier turned officer turned star-crossed lover. Hey, buddy. I know you think you're in love with Sandara, but you're too close and invested in seeing the truth. I'm telling you, it's a trap! General Akbar, this is Sandara. I'm pregnant. I told you it was a trap! It was a trap! Officer, turned lover, turned father, turned rap star. It's a trap! It's a trap! It's a trickety 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 trap! Coming not so soon to a theater near you. Wonderful listeners, and welcome to another episode of Season 2 of the Above Average Joe Show. Today's guest has worked on a lot of stuff, some of his own projects and some other projects that weren't of his own. He's worked on Hunger Games and Dumb and Dumber 2, Taken 3, Ant-Man and the Wasp, Fast and Furious 7, also known as Furious 7, um, a Deadpool project, Triumphant, a Star Wars fan film, Kratos, a God of War story. Our guest today is Garrett Dumas. How are you doing, Garrett? Hey, I'm doing great. How's it going? It's going pretty good. I'm excited to talk to you because we've worked on a lot of these projects together, actually. <laughs> yeah, man. I was like, Joe Nelson's got a show. <laughs> Um, but we're going to specifically focus on probably about six of these. But before we go and focus on those projects, how did you get into the film industry? Um, not like most people. Well, maybe not, maybe it is like most people. Um, I was originally, um, actually, I was doing mixed martial arts. Uh, fighting was my life for, I don't know, like three years. Uh, and um, as I was... Uh, just training and training and becoming better. 
I got invited to work on Teen Wolf. Um, I went and worked on Teen Wolf. Uh, it was like a club scene. Didn't really like it. It was like, you know, just background. This is before I knew it was called background. I just thought it was being a guy on a TV show. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I did it. Didn't really like it. And then I went back. I was like, okay, this is not for me. Went back to fighting. Um, and then I ended up getting a, what was it? Tyler Perry sh- m- movie called Single Moms Club. And uh, I was a uh, Chippendale waiter. Slash, like, I wasn't really a dancer, but, like, I had the whole bow tie with the pants and the shirt off, blah, blah, <laughs> And uh, it was, like, the girls were just going crazy. Was, uh, and, like, uh, the one of the actresses, uh, I don't want to say her name, she looks at me and she goes, you look good. I was like, what? <laughs> you know, this is kind of unreal. And then, like, uh, the other actress walks up, I mean, and just drops like it's hot in front of me. <laughs> I'm like, whoa! And, like, this is me as background. Um, I'm just like, I'm like, you know, for, for me as a first time, you're just like, you know, these are actresses you grew up watching TV. If you've seen, this, seen the movie, you probably can guess. And I was just like, whoa! But, um, you know, it was it was fun. You know, women shoving fake money down my pants as I start <laughs> and stuff like that. Uh, I met one of my friends on that set, I think, Robert Hamilton was his name, uh, Turns out I didn't know we we weren't we didn't become friends we were just both uh, serving drinks but I we didn't become friends till after that but it was um but yeah it was it was fun but it still wasn't for me and I think what happened was um this was when the industry was first coming into Atlanta so it was just you know most of us you know we were all doing other things most of us weren't film people it's just Tyler Perry I think he was all that was here so um then um I ended up. Uh, I got invited to work on a show called The Originals. You know, me cause doing mixed martial arts, I was like kind of just working where housework, you know, typical grunt work, you know, um, in between because, you know, I was, oh yeah, I did start college for a little bit, but for that side, fighting was, was more for me. College wasn't really my thing. Start, I got invited on a show called The Originals and uh, I was invited to stand in um, off and on. It was kind of like, uh, I was standing, I was a, a, a replacement stand-in for my friend Dante. He's a stunt guy now. So whenever he couldn't be there, I would stand in for him. It was the first season. You know, I was, like, shy. Like, and, you know, I, I was told, like, don't talk to the actors. You know, this is me, you know, uh, not knowing anything about the film industry at this point. So they're like, don't talk to the actors. Don't look at them. Leave blah, 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 leave them alone, blah, blah. So I never did, but the actors were so nice. So, you know, because I was, uh, you know, it, you know, of course, you know, stand-ins have another type of, you know, relationship. You know, so it's like uh, they were always really, really nice and stuff like that. And uh, that was actually the first time because I, w- I, I wasn't really thinking of being an actor. But, you know, I was just standing in and it was like something that was, you know, cool. And I was still doing fighting. And then, um, yeah, they one day they just threw me in. And uh, uh, and I, my first time I ever ran lines was on that set because it was me and all the main act. It was me and like was it, it was uh, Joseph and Daniel. uh and uh, along with the other main actors, uh, running lines. I. What is running lines for anyone that might oh. not know what running lines is? Um, it's um, it's basically you're 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 running the scene. Um, you're you're reading the lines of the actor. The the guy I was standing in for the new guy, he was late, so they had me st- they had me do his lines with the uh, with the cast. And for me at that time, I was just like, uh, you know, I was just like, <laughs> I was just like, okay. Um, you know, I, I mean, I could act cause they had me doing background on the show, you know, so I was, I was pretty good. I realized I was pretty good at it. Um, um, and cause, uh, they ended up giving me like a lot of camera time. I never really thought about that stuff. I just was having fun. You know, I wasn't, um, I, I find that for me, like when I would, you know, any set, I never try to be on camera. I just try to make everything real. I act and the camera just comes to me and that's the, and, and you know, and I, and I guess being a stand-in, that's, that's one of the things that helped. Um, but I never thought about it at that time. I just liked everybody, and I was just—it was a job for me. It was—I was making some extra. I didn't have to work in a warehouse, and I could still fight. But no, uh, uh, then I got invited. I, I was working uh, by uh, Rose Lock. Uh, it was a CL casting at the time. Uh, it was Jamie, all those guys. They're all together, and I got um, asked to come work on a Fast and Furious Seven. Um, I was, uh, I was, I was, I was, I was beyond excited. 
I was like, oh my God, I'm going to get to work in Fast and Furious 7. Whoa. <laughs> you know, this is, when you first start out doing background, you're just like, you, you're you're excited over everything. So you're like, whoa, I'm going to get to do this. <laughs> you know, I wasn't really, I, and, and I didn't really like, um, I, I, I didn't really know how things would change at that point. I ended up, I just showed up. Uh, I was beyond excited, ecstatic every day. Uh, I was just an uh, army guy. I mean, they paid me, they paid us more. They paid us a really good rate. They paid us like the like BG rate at that time, which is really, you know, I didn't know what that was back then. But that was really good. Um, and I was just excited. I was getting paid really well. And I was on set with all, like, you know, Vin Diesel and everyone else. I was doing the background stuff as a military. I was walking back and forth. I was joking because they sometimes they, 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 would, they, would, they would not run sound. And said so he was saying we could talk, so I was literally was making up stuff. And I'm like, yeah, well, one day I'm joking, spinning this thing around, and Paul Walker's behind me. And he just starts laughing because I was joking and goofing off. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> and he just starts laughing. I was like, oh. I was like, I was like, yeah, hey, hey. I made Paul Walker laugh. There we go. And um, <laughs> and you know, and it's like, yeah, they were staring at me because they they uh, I was because I was doing crosses around them. They thought I guess they thought I looked like Vin Diesel. They thought we were related or something. They, they, they were joke. Those guys, they joke all the time on set. So I guess they thought I looked like Vin Diesel. Like, it's one point, like, because uh, Vin Diesel didn't have a st- – Vin Diesel has a regular stand-in. A guy that stands in him for everything makes, like, six figures a year or something like that. Oh. But he was he was late one day, and, and they were like, uh, they had me stand in for Vin Diesel. But I was like, you know, back then, you're like, you know, getting into – I was – I had never, like, stood – I mean, I was stood in somewhat, but I, like, was, like, totally – like what you know (laughs) slightly starstruck (laughs) yeah i I wouldn't say starstruck it was more like i I didn't expect this you know what i mean yeah you know not on this level i didn't expect this they were running lines and i was running lines with the other uh stand-ins uh around the table and uh, i they just had someone else reading for me because i didn't have uh, sides because they didn't give me sides because you know i was just filling in i was still in my uniform and everything and then like yeah i mean it was and then like uh, one day i guess we're working Many other people come in. I think uh, Genuine came to set one day. I didn't even know. I didn't know. I didn't recognize. I kind of seen him in years. You know, like man, like I said, they were all joking. We're, it was just, it was cool. It, like seventeen hours on set, it didn't feel like anything. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's why I think. Yeah. It was, I mean, it started to feel like that on every set I was working on. It was like that on almost every set I worked on. But it was like it just flew by, and they fed us really well. And then, no, here is a moment that I haven't. I don't tell many people. One day, you know, because I was full of energy like every day i was whenever they needed a background i was the first one on set i was just happy like whenever they need i was there i was there i was there like you didn't have to like look for me and then one day i'm sitting around there with um one of the other background there's not very many of us out there and and james wan comes out and he thanks us and he looks right at me you know and he says thank you and i'm like whoa <laughs> you know and as, as back then you're like i don't know how you know the big Big of a deal that kind of was, you know what I mean? Yeah, and for uh-huh. any of our listeners, James Wan is the director of Fast and Furious Seven. In case that American you don't Horror. recognize that name, <laughs> yeah, American Horror Story, Aquaman. He's directed. He's a cool guy. Lots yeah, of great always, stuff. Yeah, Very he's talented been, dude. Yeah, he's he's been cool in my book. I was like, no, thank you, dude. Thank you for having us, man. I mean, I was I was like I said, it was just like I was like a kid. It was like earlier on and. And and it was cool. And you know, I, I was like, man, I really like, I really enjoyed it. when it was over. I was like, I was kind of sad because you know, it, it was like you know, Kurt Russell was there, I think. And like, dude, I'm like running these scenes, making up all these lines, and like everyone's cracking up. It's it was fun. And then I, well, yeah, I was like, I, I it was when it was over, I was like, oh man, because we were fitted and all this stuff. This is like the first time I had done any, done anything like really like that. So I've been doing like little backgrounds here and there at that point, but it wasn't like it wasn't like on that level. And then, like, I, was it two weeks later, a week later, uh, they were looking for military people, and I get called back. Nice. And this is, this was when um, I was uh, I was just like, yeah, I'll go back. <laughs> 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 and uh, and um, uh, they they booked me, and we end up going back, and they end up putting me in like this cool like battle armor, full suited up, covered up. Uh, they get they give me what was it, it was like MP4 with a silencer, full assault rifle. I mean, it's like all I'm all like geared out like a badass, right? I didn't know what was coming on, and then uh, later, then the next thing I know, they're throwing me in a speeding uh, SUV. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Uh, we're speeding around the corner. I'm hopping out. Like, and every time it's like, I, I realize this, like each take I do a little, uh, cause this is, remember, this is when it was just first starting. There weren't like, they, they, I guess they weren't as strict on what BG were doing. Yeah. A good rate. So I was jumping out of like, it was skidding with stunts, jumping out of the speeding car. I mean, I've done it tons of sets since then, you know, but you'd have to guess which shows. I, I jumped out of speeding car, ran up, ran up in Vin Diesel with an assault rifle to his back, you know, and we all surround him. And like, I do this several, and then, you know, as each take, I, I jump out sooner and sooner, you know what I mean? Pushing, and then like, I'm like, and you know, this at this point, they're treating us like cast. I'm like, dude, I'm one minute, I'm, I'm helping him, next minute, I'm running up on him with full geared on assault rifles running up on Vin Diesel, speeding cars with stunts. Not only that, they not only that, I think I was doing so well, uh, they cut it out the film. But even when Jason Statham stunt double Aww. runs up, and the other SUV coming the other way, it's also me jumping up out of that speeding SUV <laughs> Jason Statham up the bridge. Yeah, yeah, it was so cool. I was having so much fun. <laughs> um, they uh, they they paid us well. They fed us uh, with cast. We had like lobster. It was the best food I think I've had on set like at that point well at that point yeah uh it was the best i ever treated like uh we vin diesel like uh we said hi to vin diesel he said hi back it was cool man it was just like uh it was it was one of those things where it was just like at that day i, I that's the time, day i came up with i met carnell he was okay. one of the guys yeah from military and i said hey uh he showed me his black panther costume i was like oh that's cool you have a black panther costume it's like dude it was like I see. I was like, no, I see you more as Green Lantern. But we should make a we should make a movie. We should make a fan film. We should make a movie, you know. And and I was and I was trying to like allow. And I, I spent the time that and was tr- trying to figure out who should I be. This this is the set that inspired the first Deadpool and Black Panther film. Because after that, um, I decided I was like, man, this is. I think this is what I want to do with my life. This was awesome, you know. And yeah, you know, you've made I, two Deadpool films. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. And after that point, I, uh, I, I got into the film industry. Um, I, I committed. I, 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 and being a stand-in, blessed with that. Being blessed with being a stand-in was I could. Um, I didn't realize how much, you know, how big blessing that was. I could list. I could watch and learn, especially on the originals at Back and Forth when I was there. Or even on Fast 7. They, like, Fast 7, they call me back again. I mean, after that, they call me back again as a stand-in. Uh, and I got to see Jaimon, uh, Brilliant actor. I had loved him from Blood Diamond. Because, you know, I worked at Blockbuster before all this. <laughs> years. Literally, you I knew these movies. <laughs> yeah, I worked at Blockbuster for like, I don't know, five years, six years when I got the military. I mean, I loved it. Um, I was like a five-star CSR. I was one of the top salesmen in the freaking Southeast. I did a lot. I traveled stores. Yeah, I had calls from people in New York. Trying, like, how do you do what you do? I was like, <laughs> but uh, no, I mean, uh, I got to work on work with Jaima. And here's a funny thing. I can say it now because it's Apparently Han is back. Um, on the set of Fast Seven, on the set last on the last time I worked on there, there was a badge with Han's face on it. I was like, wait a minute, he died. <laughs> it was like on the floor. I was like, it, you know, it was on purpose. It was like a badge. It's like who makes a freaking badge and throws it on the ground? And just <laughs> it? You know, <laughs> I kept my mouth shut. So I was like, I thought he was gonna be in Fast Seven. I thought he was gonna pop up, but he didn't. He think he popped up afterwards. But like uh, now he's in a new one apparently. So. But no, I saw a badge with Han's face on it from like all those years ago when I was like uh, the last time when I was standing there for Jaiman. I mean, I, I was standing there for Jaiman. I was standing for somebody else, but I was just there and I got to see Jaiman. He was cracking me up. It was that helicopter scene where Toretto's coming to the car and he's shooting at him with the minigun. He's like, Toretto! Toretto! <laughs> yeah, it was great. It was great. But uh, no, but no, I mean, yeah, but after, like I said, after, I think Fast and Furious 7, I, that was that. Uh, that that thing was like I want to do this with my life. This is what I want to do for the rest of my life. This is I wasn't sure it was my calling, but I knew it was just what I wanted to do. You know then, I mean? Yeah. Where do you come up with your ideas then for like the script for like Deadpool and for your Star Wars fan film and Kratos and Triumphant? Where do where do okay. you get those ideas from? Star Wars. Uh, I mean, uh, Deadpool Black Panther film. Um. I said, literally, I saw Carnell's costume. I was like, oh, you have a Black Panther suit. And then it took me like a week of sitting at home. And I was like, what hero could I be? Um, and then I was like, oh, Deadpool. Because like, you know, when I'm more comfortable, you know, 
you know, when I'm being goofy, I'm I'm probably closer to his personality. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> I do. So when I'm, I'm when I'm when I'm comfortable, you know, you know what I mean. Like I, if I'm not comfortable, I can be really quiet. If I'm comfortable around you, I, I can I can talk a lot. Um, but it's um, yeah. When I was um, I was like, who can I be? It took me like a week, and I was like, hey, you know, I can be Deadpool. There's no Deadpool films. No one's done a Deadpool film. It won't. It, you know the the. I think they were they were always in talks, but it won't get approved. Was, yeah, was this like, was before Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, yeah. Um, in his solo film, but was this after the really bad version of him in X Men? Yeah, this is after the really bad version. He's <laughs> never been done right. Yeah, yeah, it's like he's never been done right. Um, and and I was like, I can do Deadpool. And then I called told Carnell, I was like, dude, I'm gonna do Deadpool. Um, and uh, and so I uh, I came up with the script. It just I, I came up off the top of my head. I um. Uh, I, uh, that one, yeah, it just, I came up off the top of my head, I was like, okay, what can I do? We can do a rescue mission. Um, what can we do? We put some missionaries in Africa, then we can t- pick a villain. Okay, uh, we'll go with, I looked up, you know, did some big research on Black Panther villains, so let's go with M'Baku. And then, and then I was just like, um, and then I was like, okay, um, who do I want to cast? Um, this is when I was doing background, like, heavily, heavily. So I used all my friends that I, I, I met doing background. This is, this is, it was pure and no one knows who you are, and it's just, we want to be in a movie, you know? We yeah. want to be actors. Um, this was like, so I would just pick people who, I my, my, my genuine friends who, when I was being background, and then we uh, needed more, and I had my friend Lewis, I think it was Lewis at the time? Yeah, Lewis, was, who ended up becoming, uh, he was a PA at the time, I think he ended up becoming 80 later on. And we ended up finding more background and getting more people who wanted to be in the movie. You know, we're just like, yeah, we're just making a movie. Um, and who wants to be in it? Um, and um, as as we were going through all this process, someone told me, it's just randomly, dude. I was on, on set. Um, someone told me about new media and how easy it is. If you, you know, if you go through, the, if you go through the process, this is the problem is people didn't want to go through the process. Yeah. And, and then I was like, well, maybe I can do that too. So I looked up SAG New Media um, in the middle of the process. And, you know, all these people, you know, they're, they're just working because they love it, you know. Um, and the, and the, these are my friends. So, so much better. Um, we, uh, we, uh, I went through the process and they all just went. I told him, okay, uh, when he approved, I said, t- I told him, um, I didn't want to tell him till it was like set in stone. And I was like, Deadpool and Black Panther back in red and black will be a sagging media film. And I think it at that time it was one of the earliest, uh, shot in Georgia anyway. And, and like, how, how does that help the people that were working on it with you? What does that mean for them for it being a SAG project? Well, first, it's like deferred. You know, if we get some money, of course, it's a fan film somewhere. Unless Marvel was like, here's some money. We're going to buy your fan <laughs> film. But uh, the thing is, everyone working on that film became SAG eligible. Um, so instead of scrounging around for years and years and years and years and years, doing who knows what to get a SAG card, uh, they all did something because they love it. They love film. They wanted to act. They wanted to be actors or actresses. And they all got their SAG card. Um, and it, it, and the film blew up more than I thought it would. Um, it blew up so big. We were doing conventions. Uh, people were like, Garrett, my friends are telling me we're preparing you. You know, people do these conventions and they don't really have anyone in the crowd or anyone in the audience. Uh, so just don't be upset when you finally go, we would go to conventions <laughs> and have a packed audience, packed room. That'd be like a thousand people. I think at the one that we were at. Yeah. Yeah. I only insane. got to go to one of them, and that was like the smallest, I think, of the ones that you went to. <laughs> yeah, they're always they're packed, fully packed, or at least you know, yeah, at least like a thousand people. And I didn't know this was this was throwing doing a something you love with with your friends, um, you know, you know, and it, to have it blow up to that extent, it's crazy. I got to tour. I got to do what, you know, people who've been working on these huge shows, huge productions. I got to do this as a guy who just wrote, predict, and produced it. Because I spent, I bought all the props. I bought all the costumes, except for Black Panther. Um, I mean, everything. 
for, uh, I mean, choreographed the fights. I did have an assistant coordinator who helped. I had a stunt coordinator, actually. This is my first stunt coordinator. But he coordinated everything, uh, Preston. Uh, Preston Baker. Um, I mean, we. Uh, this was his first go around. First thing he comes and tells me, he's like, Garrett, Garrett, you know what your film needs? Like, I met him on set. That's was background. <laughs> I was take in three, I think it was. Uh, he's like, you need me to set myself on fire. <laughs> like, I'm like, I, I, okay. Because <laughs> I did everything. I mean, we, I location scouted. Uh, I, I found the Atlanta prison farm. You know, gosh, it's night. The story's there, but the cops are so nuts. <laughs> um, skip over those stories. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we, we found the Yellow River Park, which is by my house. We shot the, the prison scene in my basement. It, it's so, like, cool. It's like, when people are doing something strictly for the love, it's such a beautiful entire process. I love everyone on that crew, and people, and I still do. I still hug everyone I run into from that set. You know, it's 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 uh, it's one of those things, man. You can't you can't recreate that at that time. But no, yeah, when we when we did that, like I said, we we we, we went around. I was going to all these conventions, and and like you know, it was one of those things where I was like, oh, Deadpool, Deadpool, and I. And I, I never thought uh, the reaction, you know, because I always kept the mask on because I didn't want to ruin the character, you know, being Deadpool, like the whole time at the con, but then people were like begging me, please take off the mask. <laughs> and then I would take it off the mask and they were roar, roar. <laughs> and, and, and it was the even bigger thing I, I realized it never hit me was like, some kids, it's just, it, it didn't matter the, the race, they're all just nuts, but when kids would see that I, the, the kids would see that, the, oh, he looks like me, you know? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm black, I'm, I'm a black man. So they would see me and they would like, they would go nuts. They're like, he looks like me. Their eyes would get wide like plates, you know what I mean? Yeah. And like these kids would just have, suddenly have all these questions about film, film industry. Like, how can I do that? How can I do this? Can I be in your film? What can I do? And it's just like, and it's something, you know, you experience over and over again. It's the worst, just like, it never gets, it never, it never gets, you never get jaded. You never get jaded from anyone. You never get jaded from across the border. Because, and then, you know, that's the way uh, people say, like, convention crowd is the most, probably the most progressive crowd you'd ever be around. And, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, it, it's, it's so much love at each event. It's, it's amazing. I mean, that alone, I mean, the, the fans, I mean, wasn't something I expected, but it was something that was, you know, very much thankful for. You know what I mean? Yeah, very appreciative of the fans. Always, always appreciative of them. Yeah, I mean, they, they, they spread it around, man. I mean, it's almost that it's a half an hour film, but, you know, it, you would think more people have seen it. It's almost like a million views or something like that. Some, some stuff. But, like, I, locally, man, it's, like, insane. It's like, they know you're their Deadpool. Even without the mask, like, I went back and they knew who I was. <laughs> yeah, people would walk up to you on the street and be like, "Hey, you're Deadpool, aren't you?" <laughs> They're like, "Oh, oh yeah." <laughs> but yeah. And then, and then after Deadpool, you worked on a project called Triumphant. Yeah. Um, how did that start out, and what was that like working on that project? Well, I ended up meeting a minister, uh, Tony, and he it was his dream to bring a. Uh, faith-based superhero in Atlanta. And I was just like, I was like, okay, well, we were talking and met, and then um, I had to, I wrote a screenplay. I had to adjust it, and then I was like, okay, we have to flush this out, because, you know, right now it's just tranquilizing. It beats up the main guy. I was like, okay, I can take this opportunity to sculpt out some other characters. So I came up with all these other characters, drawing them up, drew them in our costumes. I was like, okay, I'm Blah, 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 blah. And I was like, and I was like, I can use my friends here and here and here. Because the minister, he really wanted to bring these a faith based superhero to life. You know, that was cool. Um, this was our first, I think, heavy VFX film, which was a lot of lessons teaching. But yeah, it, it was, um, it ended up, ended up being uh, quite a beautiful film. It, right now, that film is actually, uh, we're being, it's being, we're pushing it right now. So it, it might be turning into something bigger. Uh, Joe Nelson worked on Triumphant. 
Wow, uh, he's awesome makeup. from what I hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was a makeup artist. <laughs> uh, Triumphant was pretty cool because it was seeing people I've worked with previously in different roles. And I realized as a writer, you enjoy uh, – that made me realize as a writer, you enjoy writing different roles for actors, especially your friends. Yeah, and when you have that have... chance to write for somebody specific and you know what they're like and you know you can bring out the best of them yeah. in a role is amazing. Yeah. Yeah, that that happened That happened in the, the second Deadpool. I don't want to put him out there. I'll just say Mike. He he was freezing up shooting the second Deadpool movie. And, you know, we I'd known him. We'd, we'd been friends for a while. I'd known him for a while. And he never – I guess he'd never seen me in director. And uh, he, he, he was in front of all the cameras and – leading he was freezing he was stuttering and i was just like hey hey this is your role you have it you don't have to audition it's yours you know just slow down your speech and that's one of those things where you see an actor truly like he killed it i mean there was a lot of actors like that i mean greg oh yeah i mean greg has greg's awesome <laughs> yeah i love i love working with greg because it's like being able to see different sides write him differently in both movies in the first movie he did great and in the second movie he did great and, and it's just like even my friend michael alford i mean every movie you get to see from first deadpool film to the banana lord in the second one to triumphant getting to write them in and seeing them as someone different seeing them grow you know it's it's so much fun it's like anyone anyone it's like even now to this day you realize you want to see these people just succeed. Anyone I work with, I want them to succeed, and I don't want them to feel like they ever owe me anything. And I make sure they, you know, that way. You know what I mean? Yeah. You you, you never you never want to see someone to think that, to feel like, oh, no, you don't owe me anything. Like, I mean, you'll never hear me talk about anyone, you know, except on this podcast type thing, but I'll never put people by name ever. <laughs> when I'm anywhere. Like, ever. I never say anything. If I know somebody, you'll 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 just find out like it happens sometimes. I'll be on sets and I'll be like, wait, why is he hugging him? Like, or because like you'll see friends, they'll be like day players or whatever, and they'll be looking at me like, oh, well, he was one of my films, blah blah. I don't say that, but then they put two and two together. Yeah. Um, but it's just like, yeah, man, it, it's 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 one of those things. It's like it's I have a film now I'm like working on. Like, nah, I I still can't wait to see like each of these different actors put into these roles and looks. Anyway. I'm sorry, I'm like rambling. <laughs> it's okay. Um, another project that you had worked on was uh, Star Wars Birth of a Sith, which yeah. has also done really, really well. Yeah, that was that was honestly me being a Star Wars nerd. I was I was on the internet, you know, looking at all the Darth Jar Jar stuff. And of course, because I'm a Star Wars nerd. It's like, I mean, I, I mean, I already looked this stuff up for like years. Like, yeah, Star, I like Jar Jar Binks. Yeah, he could, he could be a Sith. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then and there are like, articles on that. And they're very convincing too. <laughs> yes, yeah. And, and like, even they, you can tell Disney like it's kind of molded. Like if you watch the Clone Wars, they've kind of molded his reactions. They've kind of fed on it. They've kind of fed it. I mean, not well before Disney, but they fed with the Clone Wars series. You can tell they fed into the Sith because if you look at his face and his reactions at a certain points, you're like, holy shit, that, that doesn't seem like normal Jar Jar. <laughs> yeah, I was just like, and there was never a fan film. So I looked online for uh, uh, one day. I was like, okay, dude, is there a Dark Jar Jar fan? So I like looked online everywhere, and I even uh, and I and I was looked at George Lucas interviews when he says Jar Jar is the key to all of this. We never had a character like this. And I was like, whoa, wait, what? You know. <laughs> so like, yeah, I was looking and I could never find a Jar Jar Binks fan film. I couldn't find one anywhere. So I was like, you know, why don't we make one? This is in between prepping for God of War. God of War was a lot, cost a lot of money, so I was like, you know, I mean, I work background and do Uber. That's how I pay for my movies. People are like, no, I, I'm not a money bag. I just work my ass off. Yeah. But uh, I was uh, saving up for God of War, but I was also paying for uh, Star Wars wouldn't cost me very much. I literally posted on my Facebook. I was like, hey, who's being a Star Wars film? <laughs> <laughs> and everybody responds, yes. yes! yes! <laughs> So I had I I decided I had to choreograph, and I realized choreographing the fights, just having guys do as it came to my head, it, it, it comes up, it, do it there in person, just the first line hits it. I I worked with Michael doing another uh the co-director Michael D on another movie called uh award-winning film called Hunter, and we choreographed the, the fight on the day. 
And I, in my mind, I, I realized if I work on the fight, well, we didn't work on a choreographed that fight on the day because that was a, a film festival uh, thing where you have to shoot it in like a weekend or whatever. But Star Wars, I, I realized if I do the fights on the day and I let the, the thoughts just flow, let the universe just flow through my mind and just go. And like, you do this, you do this, you do this. Fights just come out. You know what I mean? I like, yeah. you know if you you've seen it, right? Yes. Like when Jar Jar's fighting all that, that was just me letting it flow. And when you let it just flow through you and just boom boom like boom boom. The boom. force. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, the fights just are they they come the one ver when you're doing one versus an army anyway. They come off magnificent. Anyway. Yeah, I I, I asked my friends to all come in and they all came in and just uh who, who wanted we had people drop in and out. Uh, I had people donate lightsabers and stuff. I started to buy some stuff, of course. People were like, uh, I had, um, uh, this is when I brought, this is my first time actually working hand out 444. I was like, hey, if you guys can bring food, we got cameras, because uh, Michael and his friend had a camera. He was part of 444. I was like, uh, if you cover props, cover food, that'd be good. And Jasper covered lunch, so we had catering for the day. We had cameras, we, used, we ended up shooting with the Sonys, uh, Michael and Andy. But yeah, dude, it was this was this film was written, choreographed the fights, and we shot it within. A, we did everything within a month. We did it so fast, Zach couldn't get the paperwork done fast. Oh wow! Yeah. Did you have anybody that accidentally showed up with like phasers and tricorders? No, no, no. These, <laughs> this was, um, when I posted, these people it, knew the difference. <laughs> no, I, I was very clear. You know, I have a, a little chat group on Facebook, so everyone's kept up to date and everything. You know, lightsabers. I had bought lightsabers. I bought lightsabers we can cut and stuff like that. I bought um, Jedi Rose for those who couldn't have them, and I told them, hey, what you have, we're not spending a lot, it's a fan film. So in order for me to save money, because I was still saying for God of War, I was like, if you can, if you can produce, like, such and such look, we'll be fine. You know, you, you know, man, like, if, if I work with you at one point, I want to get you back, have you on something else, you know what I mean? Yeah. But no, we ended up, uh, I ended up just taking the helms, and, you know, I, I you, you'll, you'll be surprised what you can do when you're given no other option. You can do anything if, 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 if you're not giving any other option. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it was, we, I found this, we went location scouting, Disney told me about Arabian Mountain or something like that, and we went out there, loca- it was perfect, and we shot it, and, you know, we, uh, I, I recorded it, uh, I, I don't know if you saw the video, I, I recorded it, I posted the video in the, in the group, I, I think I might have posted it on Facebook, too, uh, on my regular Facebook, about yep. me location scouting. And, uh, yeah, I think had, that's where I saw it, yeah. Yeah, 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 and then, like, yeah, we shot that within, like, uh, we shot that in a day. That was a all on natural light, and it was, uh, I like to say, it was it was great. I mean, ever it, 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 you took the little pieces. We lost people on the way. When I first t- initially was a main stunt coordinator, the more you have to do it, the more it just becomes easy. You know what I mean? Yeah. The first, day, I didn't want to be stunt coordinator. Even the second Deadpool, I didn't want to be the stunt coordinator. But my stunt coordinator was walk, working on a, another show, like a huge show, so he couldn't be there. So uh, who else knew all the stunts? Me. So. I had to, that's why I ended up stunt coordinating and directing. And you do um, what you gotta do. <laughs> you do. You do. Star Wars Birth of the Sith is now a multi-award winning fan film. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. Uh, congratulations to everyone on that. They, they were all shocked. You know, I would love Shannon. She asked me, could she be a Jedi? She's so sweet. You, uh, you know her, Shannon. She asked me to be a Jedi. And I was like, I had to write her in there. <laughs> she, she, I, she, was, she knows, she'll know now. I literally wrote that role in there strictly for Shannon. <laughs> oh um, yeah but yeah she did you know she told me she's like she uh you know she never thought she'd be a jedi and that was like i was so i got so emotional i was like oh jeez. <laughs> <laughs> but it was like it was it was just so cool um when, when you get those people and like uh it's even like you know irene seeing her in a different role after triumphant was so cool because i told her i want to work with her next because you know she, she's beautiful dude and like I was surprised, like she wasn't like didn't you know at that point she didn't have an age. She does now. It's a multi award winning film. Uh, I've been I've been touring cons, going to conventions at Darth Jar Jar. Uh, the page <laughs> jumped up to five thousand followers, and this all, I mean it has fourteen thousand views on on like on my, on the alternate reality channel. Uh, that's when I started my own channel. But like I've never had like a film like get so much uh, acclaim. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, uh, um, you broke. still got more coming. <laughs> yeah, all right. And it, Broke was the AD on that one. But yeah, it was just like, yeah, the people love it, man. The, the fans love it. 
Uh, and I think that's the the thing is when you do something that was literally just done because I love Star Wars. You know, I even put I I didn't want George Lucas or anyone to think or or I was trying to just do something on their own. I I put a disclaimer. I put thank you to George Lucas because it really is thank you. Without George Lucas, there'd be no yeah, Star Wars. Universe. Yeah. We use John Williams original scores. Uh, we cause we try to make up a mu- music, but it just it just we couldn't find something that did it. And it was just like, well, John Williams, he's one of the most brilliant composers. In film history, I mean, in history, period. Yeah. So we used his original music, and I, you know, the, the the first trial was the first week up, making sure, you're like, because you know, you've heard like, you know, Disney taking down people's Star Wars stuff. Um, but yeah, they as soon as we put it up, um, because of course I didn't put it, no monetization, so I couldn't make any money on it. But guess who did? Uh, Disney and Sony added their, they they tacked it up. They 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 put their they gave their credits, their proper musical credits and stuff. If you look at it, you'll see legitimate, like, the corporate stuff on the bottom of all the stuff. Wow. And they, and they left it. That's awesome. They left it. They let us keep it up. And, yeah, I mean, it's it's one of those films where it's just like, it's like, it's not that people don't know about it. It's just everyone who sees it, they love it. And we, we have, every once in a while, we get one of those really, really, really nitpicky Star Wars fans. <laughs> you used me so when you should have used me. You used me so when you should have used you so. I'm like, oh, come on, dude. I was like, seriously? I'm like, come on. He's like, never worn blue shoes before. I know, right? <laughs> and I was like, why is he wearing a tie? Because we thought it looked good, all right? <laughs> but um, but yeah, I mean, like everyone who sees it loves it, and it, and it's really, really good feeling. Like I got to go to the Jekyll Island Comic Con and start Jar Jar. Uh, you know, getting you know ovations from people after they watch the film. I gotta post it. I got like whole videos from all the conventions. I haven't posted yet from uh the viewing the viewings and stuff like that. Uh, I mean. Thank you to Lily. Uh, we got a we got a screening. They played it all day at Momocon. No, nice. love it. Yeah, yeah. People, I it, it was cool. Like you'd hang out by because you hang out by the theaters and hear people talking about it. And they like, oh my, God, you see that? You know, I think someone noticed me. And I was like, oh no, because <laughs> 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 they because they, they played it like all weekend. Like the the weekend we released the week the year we released it, they played it like the, last week we played. They played like all day. I think maybe she said it may have been all weekend, but I know it was all day. And every time we walked by, in between like the animes. It was Star Wars Birth of Sith. <laughs> and, and, like, people were just, like, they were just, like, talking, like, oh, yeah. It was, like, and it was, it's just so cool. Um, you know, with Star Wars fans appreciate it, it's, like, it, that's enough. You know what yeah. I mean? And, yeah. like, and, 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 I don't know. It was cool. <laughs> and then before we wrap things up, let's talk about Kratos for a little bit. Um, Kratos, God of War Story is another project that you worked on. Which you had to undergo a physical transformation. Talk a little bit about what you had to do to get into the role that you played on that, and also tell the people, the listeners, um, exactly like what the story is about and everything too. Well, Kratos: The God of War story was uh, an idea. Uh, it's one of those ideas where, when I came up with it, I never thought it would come to life. It was kind of like. A wish. There you go. Dude, I want Kratos. That'd be cool. And, you know, that was like when I first got in this industry, like five or six years ago. I didn't know how to do what? Anything. I was like, dude, yeah, that'd be cool to be Kratos from God of War. Because, you know, it's, it's a game that came out like in the 90s. I grew up playing it. Kratos was a guy who, he was a herald of Ares. He, he was a soldier for Ares. He was a Spartan. And he would go out and wipe out other armies and in the name of Ares. Ares, being an asshole that he is, uh, put Kratos in a blind rage one day and had Kratos slaughter his wife and daughter. Uh, and in punishment for doing that, Kratos was covered in the ashes of his wife and daughter. Uh, for eternity, pretty much. Is the, is the gist of it. In this, he finds out that it was all because of Ares is why, you know, he, he killed his own wife and daughter. He sets on a rampage through all of the Greek mythos to take out Ares. Athena, who I come to find out, you know, she comes across as a goddess of wisdom, but she was also a goddess of war as well. Which is kind of interesting because it makes him makes more deeper to the story. That uh, she she helps she aids him in the killing Ares and the tracking him down and um, and, and the taking him out. Only for uh, Kratos to realize that Zeus and all of them. They could not wipe he because he, he said for killing Ares he, he wanted them to wipe the memories of his his wife and daughter from his mind. They Zeus and the other Greeks they told him they couldn't do it. 
but instead they ask him to be the next god of war. And after killing Ares, uh, he becomes the god of war. I mean, the story is pretty interesting. I mean, he goes throughout the whole Greek mythos until they turn on him, and he pretty much wipes out the entire Greek, all the Greek gods, down to Zeus, to the point to where after that he gives up on everything and he kills himself. He runs a dad, he runs a sword through himself. The sword that kills Zeus, he runs that same sword through himself. But someone does, someone tells Kratos that it's not your time. You have to look up the creator, you have to figure out the rest of the story, but Kratos gets another shot at life, because, uh, and he gets another life. He gets a family, and that's where it is now. But ours is based on uh, Kratos uh, before he uh, on his path to destroying Ares, or betrayal. I didn't have any skills of, of how to build this or put this type of thing together. But, you know, maybe I was thinking it was three years into the industry, I, I started working on the script in between everything. I think I, I first started writing it. Maybe it was, on, it was on Sleepy Hollow. Yeah. I was standing in on Sleepy Hollow, and that's when I first started writing the script. Um, and I was just like, and I was like, oh, you know, yeah, let me come up with an idea. And then a year after that, you know, I started, uh, you know, Collecting cast and crew, but I, you know, it, I realized how much money it would cost. So people, I had a, I had a stunt team, full stunt team came on, and almost all of them left for the most part, because you know it cost me a lot to build up, um, and train myself. I started training and dieting on my, on my diet and the best way I could. I had a trainer. Uh, I, I mean, I was working out six days a week pretty much, and then I started meeting with me and. Uh, Preston Baker, I opened up Action Dojo. So I, I went there and I used everything I learned from the Star Wars film in order to choreograph the fights for God of War. And the God of War fights ended up being, you know, like I said, they're magnificent. They're they're beautiful. As I was collecting the props, I ended up meeting and uh, starting collecting a new stunt team. Um, and I was just asking people. I was getting, uh, fortunately, fortunately, I was able to get some SAC people and getting um, people who were training for stunts. And it was it was great. I had a solid stunt team. It was like a family. These guys were all dedicated. Uh, you, you got Ray Bon. He's doing brilliant now. Of course, uh, uh, Ramon came back because uh, he was from Star Wars, and he was in the second Deadpool film. So like when we were, uh, oh yeah, Michael, my roommate. Uh, he was cool. Michael Jones. He's cool. He, he did a brilliant job. It's, it's something as a director. It's it's beautiful when you could have an actor. And you care so much for them already. And most people, these people, man, when you could see them live up to their potential, push what they don't think they could do. If you talk to them and they do it and they can do it and, and, and they're, they, they're willing to put them to work, you know, and, and when you see that become that reality, it's like any actors, actresses, any, anyone, any people, when you see that and you, it's, it's, it's one of those things where you're just like, you know what I mean? Yeah. It, it, you can give them the confidence, and then it's like you're a proud papa. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't do it. Yeah. That's my girl. Yeah. They're all my brothers and sisters, man. They're all my family. You know. You know, I am a faith man. My brother, sister, and God. We, you know, Joshua, Jesus. He's he's our biggest brother of all. He's, we're all connected. Um, but it's um, it's it's when you see like you love seeing these people. And they can do it, you know, and they, they just realize they can. So we shot, it was a beautiful location. I wasn't cu- sure we're shooting outside, but I was like, okay, let's do it. Came to the day of shooting. I mean, it was just like, a, it was a trek. But fortunately, uh, the atrium had power, so we were in power. And, you know, fortunately, on the day of, thankfully, uh, they covered the catering. And the guys, uh, they helped, you know, brought the cameras, thankfully. You know, I, I paid <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, I, you know, of course, I, you know, anything that had to be paid, like expenses, the crew, anything, it was all for me, all out of my pocket. But it's one of those things where you're just like, it's not about the money, you know? It's like, you don't, it's, as long as I can bring this to life, it's like, thank you for bringing me the pieces of this. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for bringing me the, I'm thankful for everything that comes. And, um, yeah, I mean, I've trained hard for a year, over a year busted my ass still while buying props and doing the choreography and, and uh, directing and stunt coordinating on the day, hyping my guys up, 
you know, we even said a prayer on that, but I loved it every, every, every day. Uh, That's awesome. Oh yeah, man. It's, I, I'm one of those true believers that you can't hide your faith. It's, it, it's part of you. And if you have to hide your faith to fit in, then you don't want to fit in. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it was, you know, then like after shooting it, uh, we were so grateful. The makeup was great. I mean, the sun came out at the right time. You know, I even met some background. I one guy who wanted to be a PA. I told him, "Hey, you can be PA on God Or," and he actually showed up. Which is surprising. <laughs> Usually, when you tell somebody you want to be a PA, I was like, "Hey, well, you want to come out? We can use extra hand in God War. You be a PA." He came out, an EPA, and this this is this is one of the things where it was a five year six year journey. But it took those five or six years for me to learn. You know everything I needed to know before we got to that point. You know, learning choreography, proper learning, it took getting a Star Wars before I could even properly do the God of War choreography. You know? Yeah. So confident in uh, using weapons. I mean, I already knew how to use weapons, but it was just like choreographed them properly. Because then I, I learned how to do stage combat and stuff like that properly, instead of just, you know, legit fighting. And uh, yeah, I mean, it was choreography, putting together the team, having a brilliant DP. Michael is a brilliant DP. I mean, brilliant. For action, uh, and there's none better. When you put everything, cinematographer, or DP, you know, it's it's uh, when you put everything together for that film. It took yeah, you know, it took five or six years in order to get that. Honestly, the the day I saw it, because uh, Michael did the editing, the day I saw the first edit, I was on set. You know, I was working on the passage at that time. He sent it to me on my phone, and it had never happened before, but. It was the first time I had literally, I was overcome in emotions. I was literally in tears. Aww. Yeah, yeah, in the middle of set. I was, li- people didn't, I had to walk away. People didn't know. So people, some people still saw me. They had no idea. I, I, I'm sure they thought it was over something trivial, but. It was, uh, <laughs> is your dad okay? <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, my, my dad is great. He is, uh, you, you know me, I only got one, my heavenly father, that's it. Uh, but, uh. Yeah, man, I was, I was, I was literally in tears. I, I showed because some of them were, or fortunately, it was blessed enough. Some of those guys were on set. The PA was on set. I think Ramon was on set. Uh, Wade, oh yeah, Wade, he was on set. He was one of the other guys too. Wade was on set. They were able to see it, and I thanked those guys. I hugged them. I, I mean, <laughs> I was like, we did it. I mean, God of War, honestly, like choreography and everything, and. It is one of the most, you know, beautiful, 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 beautiful films I have ever done. Um, it's still in the process. Uh, VFX, because uh, our VFX guy had stuff going on, and with without our our, our regular VFX guy, it's, it's a really expensive film. So we're trying to get help. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, even without the VFX right now, I mean, being finished, it is. Probably the most beautiful action of film you will ever see. Wow! Um, wow. It, it, I mean, it's it's the most beautiful film I've done, action wise. Um, I mean, it's it, it's it's just everything comes together perfectly. Um, I mean, those guys, those those stunt guys, they did phenomenal. I mean, they did phenomenal. I mean, these guys are already doing great. Like you can see, I can see their careers. When you see people like that that are that much talented, you know regardless whether you came along or not. I'm just being a small part of their story is a blessing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, see, those guys, they're blowing up now. They're all over the place now. I mean, but it's just, um, it's the film itself is phenomenal. Uh, I mean, we may get it picked up. I have, we recently had uh, an investor look at it. I don't want to talk too much about that, but, you know, it's, it's, uh, we're, we're trying to open a door, man. I mean, the goal is maybe we can get a feature film. We can make it into a feature. You know, maybe I'll get recast. I'm okay with that. I already know who I want to play in, so. <laughs> <laughs> Your buddy, yeah. Vin Diesel. <laughs> All right, we ask Vin. Vin or, Vin or Jason. Uh, Jason's really, it was really nice. I got to work with Jason on Red Road. He was a really cool dude. I was kind of like his unspoken, like, brother on that show. If you look whenever you see his mom's house, like, I'm, I, I'm in the, I live in that house with his mom. <laughs> Which is kind of cool. Uh, yeah, Jason was a cool dude. Um, but, uh, the, yeah, it's, um, but, yeah, man, I mean, God of War, yeah, it's, 
it's a lot it was a five or six year journey i got dude i kid i kid you not the year i was finally working on it i got to stand in for tc carson tc carson is the original voice of kratos oh wow i wanted to i wanted to pick That's... his brain so bad i was like <laughs> play it cool play it cool cool was like, like i was like play it cool play it cool I'm a stand in. Don't freak him out. <laughs> Tell me about Kratos. No, I didn't do it. But uh, no, it was. I got to stand in for TC Carson. I was like, dude, this is like manifest destiny right here. I was like, I got to sign. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was yeah. gonna say we've been recording for over an hour now. Oh, jeez. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. It's all. It's all good. It's been fun. Um, so I just want to thank you real quick. Let's go ahead and get things wrapped up. Okay. And do you have any social medias or links or anything that you want to share with our listeners uh, that we'll also share on all of our social media too? You can look me up on Instagram as Garrett Shadow. It's Garrett HD on Twitter and and my and my actress page is Garrett H. Dumas. I mean, feel free like our you know alternate reality YouTube page. I mean, I mean, if you want to watch the films, I mean that's that's the coolest thing. You make films so people can watch them, enjoy them, and forget about whatever is going on in the world. And that's why entertainment, you know, that's Stanley's biggest guy when he was, when he said, uh, you know, he didn't, he didn't think being a comic book artist was important enough, you know, but then, you know, he realized, you know, that he, he does. I mean, it, it is, it's what, it's, it's what people turn to in those times of needs or when they need to forget or when, when they, when they need, they need to recharge it, you know, it's an escape. It's an escape. It's, or it's just a safe place. It's not an escape. You know, he did it with X Men. It was a, it was a, it was a look at reality into, so people could understand it. You know, you, you know, it was came out that, uh, Malcolm, that uh, Professor X was was uh, Martin Luther King, and and Magneto was actually Malcolm X. They were all they're based off real people. Yeah. And if you replace mutant with minority, you know, mutants were treated like black people were treated like back then. And he wrote that he's like, you know, we, God made us all to be equal to regardless of the color and people said you know because you're a different color you should be treated you know a certain way and but he did it in a way to where you know you could see you could see through the, even at being a bigot you could see the you, you you at first you don't know you just see oh it's a comic book you know yeah. and, but you said why are they treating the mutants so bad they're just there's people they have powers then you're like why am i treating black people that way yeah, yeah. once there's, you see the parallels it opens up yeah a whole great. new world and perspective of yeah. those comics their brain, their brain awakens, you know, and and you know that's that's why I love Marvel. <laughs> Marvel kids since I was a kid, and you know, and uh, yeah, man, it's I didn't think being, I didn't honestly didn't think working in film was important enough. Um, and now you yeah. know differently. <laughs> yeah. And knowing it's half the battle. It, it is half the battle. It's my calling, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again for hanging out with me, Garrett. This has been about. awesome catching up. <laughs> yeah. And thank you listeners for checking in with us again on another episode. And we will see you next week on another episode of the Above Average Joe Show. (laughs) Thank you again to our special guest, Garrett Dumas. Be sure to check out our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitters, and look us up on Spotify, Stitcher, and iTunes. You can also check out another podcast I co-host, The Extra Unordinary, and some other great media content by Moon Possum Productions at moonpossum.com.